Welcome back once again to Forbes Sports Money. NFL Network CEO Steve Bornstein is a veteran of the sports television world. And in 2003, he led the launch of a cable channel that wanted to be of interest to NFL players, coaches, and staff first and foremost, knowing that football fans would no doubt follow and tune in to watch the revealing looks behind the scenes of America's most watched sport. Well, along with its sister station, NFL Red Zone, which follows any team on Sunday that's within 20 yards of scoring a touchdown, the NFL Network began the task of creating content for football consumers and getting that content distributed through the major cable providers. In the last five years, NFL Network has doubled its ratings, and last year, Bornstein was able to secure a deal with Time Warner Cable, the last major cable holdout. Michael Ozanian met with Bornstein at Radio City Music Hall during NFL Draft Week to discuss the business of the NFL Network. How has the business changed since you first started with ESPN many years ago? I don't think it has changed. I just think it's gotten deeper. What do you mean by deeper? When I started at ESPN, you know, I remember the common refrain was, you have all the sports you want on Saturday and Sunday and at the time on the three networks. That was before the arrival of the Fox Net, uh, Sports Network. Nobody needs to watch uh, uh, college sports or uh, sports on the weekday. And what we found out was that that was wrong, that people enjoyed uh, sports, both professional and college, during the week. And that's what we'll find here. People like pro sports. People like college sports. People are going to like high school sports. And I, don't, I think we've only started the, the, to scratch the surface of, where the, of what we're going to televise. Last year, one of the big things for the NFL Network was signing Time Warner Cable. Now your households are above 70 million nationwide. What type of economic impact has that had on the network, or will it have going forward? Actually, that allows us to spend more capital developing new programming and developing new assets that make you know, the NFL network must see TV in non-game situations. That's really the trick on any of these networks. Games are easy, highlights are easy, but how do you have people interested in your content when you're off-season or you're not on Sunday? And that's, that's where we spend a hell of a lot of our time thinking about how to improve the network. How have all the new technologies that have come about in the last two years changed the programming and what type of content decisions you make? Well, I don't know if it really changes the content. You know, the touch points with our consumer, with our fans, are only increasing. So, you know, we get very excited. You know, we did a few years ago when we took our internet assets in house. We get very excited with smartphones because it's just another touch point for us to communicate and be in, t in contact with our fans. And that's where the consumption is really being driven right now. I mean, biggest percentage increases we have are in the mobile space. What about expanding outside of the United States? Do you think that's a growth opportunity? Well, yeah. I mean, we have a pretty big, broad footprint already. We have five million homes in in uh, Canada, and we have another. I think five million homes in Latin America. So I mean, we're almost 10 million homes uh, uh, that are watching us now on a 24-hour, seven-day-a-week basis. We're looking at the UK. We do two. We, do, we have done a game there now for the last six years. We're looking at. We're expanding this year to a second game. So that may be an opportunity for growth for us as well. If you're a football fan out there and you're watching this show right now. What do you think may be some of the biggest surprises they see in general in terms of how football content is delivered? I think the best answer to that question is it's going to be a multi-screen answer. I think, I think the days of sitting down and watching a game from beginning to end, watching one game beginning to end are probably behind us. I think people are going to consume these games. Uh, on multiple screens in their home, on their way to the soccer match, and other areas outside of the home where they're consuming football. Uh, uh, that to me is a plus for the for for our fans and for the National Football League. But I think that's how it's going to be. I think I think people will end up spending more time because there will be more opportunity to access this information. I think people will spend more time on NFL football outside of Sundays, outside of the time we play a majority of our games, because of the interest in it. And that's what we're trying to make sure happens. That Tuesday and Wednesday and Saturday and Friday are also days when you want to consume NFL media. Experimentation of programming is a part of your job. Was there any show that uh, has been very successful that when you first sort of came up with the idea and, and thought about it, you're like, well, maybe this will work, maybe not, but it's turned out to be hugely successful? Well, I can go back 30 some odd years and tell you when the first president of ESPN, Chet Simmons, came up with the idea of televising the NFL draft. <laughs> uh, I mean, I was I was dumbstruck. I mean, uh, he was nice enough to take me along to the meeting with Pete Rozelle when he made the pitch, and I thought he had been struck dumb. 
the fact that Pete that is, I mean, he was shocked at it, and and the fact is, it became you know, it became a, a a national holiday. They used to hold the draft on a Tuesday morning, and people would start calling in sick from work to watch the draft. Going back to your days at ESPN, right up to the present, what do you consider? the biggest mistake that you learned from and then that subsequently helped you going forward? Well, I have, there are so many mistakes. <laughs> I, I don't know where to start. I mean, I, I think the one thing I learned in this uh, business is that <clears throat> you got to be prepared to take risks and to, and to fail, but you shouldn't make those failures too big and you shouldn't, that shouldn't stop you from taking the next risk. So, you know, I, I had no idea when we moved the draft to prime time that it was necessarily going to work, but we have an organization here at the NFL that wishes to innovate, and so it did innovate. And, and, and if it hadn't worked, we would have changed plans. It turned out to be a pretty big success. So I guess my best lesson was don't, don't be afraid to continue to innovate. How satisfied are you right now with what you've done with the NFL Network? We, we've set out to what we want to do. It may have taken us slightly longer than we'd wanted, but we accomplished what we wanted, which was a fully distributed network that's televising and talking football 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So if you're interested in it, you can turn us on. If you're not interested in it, you got you know 100 other channels you can watch, and that's okay with us, but we're fortunate to have a sport that people seem to be interested in. All right, Michael, let's talk a little more about your conversation. What, what's next? Is it getting in more homes? Is it more programming, more games? Well, I think if you look at the NFL Network right now, Bob, they already have the highest carriage fees of any of the pro sports, higher than baseball, hockey, or basketball. So it would be tough to increase that. And then if you look at their reach, they're throughout the country. You know, that was a huge deal they struck with Time Warner. That sort of was the last piece of the puzzle. I think it's going to be more live sports programming. NFL games and the pregame and postgame shows to NFL games have the highest ratings for the NFL Network. And I think all this other ancillary program kind of could add some stuff. But really, at the end of the day, people want to watch live sports, and I think they're going to expand their reach there. Well, they get to see the games 13 times a year on the Thursday night package. But you and I have talked about this. What if they ever decided to test the market with that package and sell it off to another network? Wouldn't that then dilute the value of the NFL Network? I agree 100%. I think they're more likely to keep it. Uh, I think what's a little sensitive here is they probably can't add too many more games there because then, you know, they start to maybe infringe. When they have the good games, what are their partners, ESPN, Fox, and so forth, that pay that big money for rights fees? It's probably not going to make them too happy. So I think it's going to be adding more live sports programming, college, and probably some high school.